all proposals differ. Nevertheless, there are some common elements. And in this lecture, I want to talk about an anatomy of a proposal, a section-by-section -section guide. All proposals have this in common. There is sort of the metaphor of a body. There are certain ways to move through this that are narrative, beginning, middle, and end. The idea of persuasion is there also, that we really are arguing our idea. We're advancing our idea for the approval of others and the idea of an audience. Let's go through each of the parts of the proposal section by section. Again, I'll try to annotate these parts from my own experiences with proposal writing. What about the cover letter? Remember the lecture on classical and modern rhetoric? Here we're using Kenneth Burke's pentad, the scene, the purpose, the action, the agency, the agent. The scene is the context for the proposal, the situation that you believe needs to be addressed. The purpose is the reason you're executing the proposal at this part. The action is the plan, the combination sort of in the cover letter of the objectives and the deliverables. The agent are those people who are going to be responsible for executing the proposal. And the agency is the vehicle, the people you work for, part of the agent. In each of these, I suggest that you spend no more than a paragraph, but at least that much, setting these up. And I suggest that you set them up in this order. Again, establishing the context that you're going to do it, the reasons, the objectives, the manifestation of the plan, who are the people who are going to do this work, and the organization that those people represent. What about the title? <clears throat> well, I think the magic is in the colon. We have a major idea and a narrowed vehicle for that there on the other side. For example, long-term care of AIDS, colon, a proposal for Newark. The expression of the ultimately general idea on the left-hand side of the colon and the narrowing of that on the right-hand side. As you remember from the process lecture, I suggested that this be written early. But again, this is an anatomy, a part-by-part -part guide. I think the title has to be good, crisp, clear, precise. The executive summary, significantly, is many times the only thing that gets read by some reviewers. It's a part-by-part -part generative overview of the document. And it really must be self-contained. It must be an evocative statement of the proposal. It's not an abstract, and you should differentiate it from that. Abstracts go with scientific material published peer-reviewed journal articles. The executive summary is something else. The executive summary is an overview for someone who is going to be reading this, who may indeed be the sole decision maker, and may indeed not be someone with the technical knowledge of the proposal. Again, I suggested this be written later on in the process, but it's a very important part of the proposal. All proposals, I think, have something akin to an executive summary. The table of contents is really the major cohesive tie in the piece. The significance here is that of cohesion through parallelism. Whatever you're terming the major sections, the minor sections, whether you're using parallel phrases, whether you're using a numbering system, these have to be clear in the content of the proposal. It's hard to think of, but some proposals run hundreds and hundreds of pages, and very often the single thing that ties it all together is the table contents. So take care here to achieve con con cohesion through parallelism in the table of contents. The recording, interpreting, and analysis of events is really sort of a definition of history, isn't it? And that's what you're giving here. The history sets the stage for the persuasive parts that are going to follow. The history shows that a need exists and that you and your agents are the ones that can at least in potential fulfill that need. The background section then becomes important as far as ordering the past. The objectives, I think, <clears throat> must be behavioral statements. That is, something's going to be done in a kind of a way, in a kind of a time. Not something vague, but again, precise verbs used here as possible. I think as well the objectives need to sort of generate the document. I put generative statement as a phrase here. They need to sort of compel the reader forward into the document. Very often the objectives can be the major sections that will set up the work plan as well. And that's here. What are the tactics for the idea? What are going to be the deliverables? Very often, this will be an extensive part of the paper that will help persuade the readers that you and your group alone are best able to operationalize the objectives from the previous part. 
spend some time on this. I suppose over the past 10 years, this section has become more than just cosmetic. Assessment of a proposal does not just mean that you submit the bills and show where they're spent. It now means that you have demonstrable evidence that the work that you said you were going to complete has been completed. Very often, then, the assessment of a proposal of a statement of work has to be empirical. We have to think in terms of reliability. Could more than one reader look at the proposal after it's completed, after, it's, after the work is done? Could more than one site visitor find the same thing to be true that you find, and are those findings valid? How can you measure the success of what you've done, and not only measure it, what vehicles have you taken to report your success? Very often to funding agencies, the idea of something being reproducible is key. If you did it, could more money be given to reproduce similar results with different agents in different settings? The assessment then becomes quite an important part of the proposal, and you treat it as something that's cosmetic only at your peril. Personnel. Who are the qualifications of the agents? I, very often in attachments, you'll submit CVs, but CVs won't really tell the story. You have to bring out the specific capabilities of people who are involved in the proposal and the match of those people's skills to the objectives and the deliverables in the earlier part of the proposal. The budget. Uh, again, the idea that the budget, I think, has to be realistic, that someone looking at a proposal can say that the statement of work and the objectives can be achieved on the budget itself. As is the section with assessment, treat this section as cosmetic as your peril. This section has to be truly, truly well done, and as I suggested with hiring a proofreader, either solicit or hire a budget analyst to work out your budget in some fashion. Uh, funding agencies look at this part of the proposal very, very carefully. The pre preparation here of a timeline, definite periods of work as well as milestones that can be reached that are realistic, as well as the conclusion. The conclusion really draws the argument home and establishes the significance of what you've done. It's certainly not a summary and it's certainly not a restatement. It's just simply a final statement that helps you provide uh, the most compelling evidence that your case is the best for winning the proposal. The supporting materials, as we said in the process lecture, began very, very early. Uh, their assembly, rather. Uh, by the end, these are very often included as some sort of an appendices. Uh, we might here reference different sites that we've looked at or consulted. Again, the two major documentation systems are those of the Modern Language Association and those of the APA, the American Psychological Association. Here we also might find conflict of interest statements. Very often funders want to know if you have additional funding for a similar kind of project from another source, if there could be a conflict, um, two agencies being used to fund the same project. It's not a good idea, and certainly many funding agencies ask for disclosure on that, and of course letters of support as well, very often from sponsors. In sum, uh, the proposal has to hang together as a cohesive document and following the writing process I've advocated as well as the anatomy here should provide that. And it is ultimately a persuasive document. It is an argument that you are the best people available to respond to the agency's call for work. Ultimately then, the proposal uh, in its different parts should be seen as an argument.